Hello and welcome back to another episode of the DIYGuy.net. Uh, today we're going to be showing you how to do the engine service for this Hustler Raptor SD. Uh, this has the 24 horsepower Kawasaki engine. The engine code is going to be an FR730V. Uh, as you can see in the seat here, we have our Stearns engine maintenance kit, which comes with everything we need to service this engine. It's going to come with two quarts of oil, our oil filter, our fuel filter, our air filter, and pre-filter, and also the spark plugs. All right, so we power washed this off last night. We let it sit in the garage and dry off. Uh, now we're ready to do the next step, which is going to be to start it, let it run for two to three minutes. What we want to do here is get the engine nice and hot so the oil can drain faster and also to heat the engine up and get those contaminants back into the oil so when we drain the oil, we pull as much of them out as we can. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. We'll start it up. We'll let it run for two to three minutes. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the camera set up on the back side and uh, start draining the oil. All right, so we're on the back side of the mower here. Right there is your oil fill. Right there is the oil filter. The oil drain is located down in there. Um, I'll lift the seat up and move the camera over there so you can better see what we're going to do. What we need to do is get a half-inch hose. If they bought this mower originally, it came with the half-inch hose to do the draining of the oil. Uh, what we're going to do is connect it onto the drain nipple, route it down through the frame here, and down into our drain bucket underneath. Uh, the reason we need to use this hose is so we don't get oil all over the frame of the mower. Once we have that hose connected, we'll grab a 10 millimeter wrench or socket and ratchet, and then we'll go ahead and open the drain uh, valve open so we can actually go out the hose and down into our drain bucket. All right, so I repositioned the camera. Hopefully you can see this. This yellow cap right here is our engine oil fill. Uh, this is our oil filter right here, and this is the drain nipple I was talking about on the bottom of the block. Uh, right here is where we need to get that half inch hose on, and right through here is a crack where we're gonna put the hose through and get it down into our drain bucket. This is the 10 millimeter we need to open uh, to let that oil flow out. All right, so now that we got our half inch pipe on, uh, we can go ahead and make sure the other end of our hose is in our drain bucket, and then we can open this valve here and let the oil start to drain. We'll go ahead and open the filler neck here to let some air in the system and let the oil drain a little faster. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you what we got down underneath of uh, where the hose ended up coming out and where the drain pan is. So this one came out pretty good. Um, without even trying to get it in that spot, it worked out good. Uh, so it came right down through the frame there, curved around our belt, into our bucket. So we'll go back up on top and go ahead and open the valve and let the oil drain out. All right, so now that we've got the oil draining, uh, we're going to let it fully drain before we remove the oil filter. So we'll go ahead and start on the air filter and the spark plugs, and then we'll come back to the oil filter. So right here in the back of the motor here, uh, right here is the air box. I'm just going to lift, and uh, right there you'll see the air filter. Uh, this one's kind of nice. It's got a little thumb screw here to actually undo this uh, clamp so you can get the air filter out easily. You don't need a tool for this one. Now that we got the old one out, we'll go ahead and unpack it for a new one. So this is our nice new one. We also got a pre-filter as well, so we'll go ahead and slide that onto the filter. Now we're ready to install it back in there. Make sure your boot is nice and clean. You can also wipe down this little air box piece as well. Go ahead and tighten the hose clamp back up. So that's it for replacing the actual air filter on this. We'll go ahead and reclose this cover, clicking it and locking it in position. All right, so we finished installing our new air filter. We're going to move on to the spark plugs, which are right here. There are two, as this is a twin cylinder. We're going to need a 1316 socket. 
to remove the plug. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually remove the plug wire. Make sure you're grabbing it by the plug uh, end here or the boot uh, to make sure you don't pull the wire out of the boot. We'll pop that off. We'll go ahead and set that aside. We'll grab our 1316 socket and our ratchet and go ahead and remove the plug. So we got our plug, old plug removed. Uh, this is a NGK uh, BPR4SE. We'll go ahead and grab our new spark plugs out of our kit, which are the same BPR4SE. Go ahead and get those out. Now what we're going to do next is set the gap. Um, this one calls for 27 thousandths to 31 thousandths, I believe. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set them at 30 thousandths which is right here on the spark plug gap. We'll go ahead and check them right out of the box. Could be a little bit tighter. So you want to just slide through with a little bit of resistance but not be pinching it and not... Uh... So this one's set pretty good now. So we're ready to install the plug in the head. Go ahead and start it by hand to make sure we don't cross thread it. Tight, we can go ahead and snug it up, or you can torque it down to 20 foot pounds of torque. Once we have it snug down and tight and torqued to the proper specification, we can go ahead and put our boot on. Make sure it clicks on there all the way. Now that we got one cylinder done, we'll go ahead and go to the other side. All right, so once we got both spark plugs replaced, uh, we can move on to the fuel filter, uh, which is right here. So I'll reposition the camera, and we'll get to replacing that. All right, so now that we got the spark plug replaced, uh, we're going to move on to the fuel filter, uh, which is right here behind the seat, right next to the starter, and right here is our fuel pump. So if we follow that hose, it'll lead us right to the inline fuel filter. Uh, this hose on the bottom here coming from the tank, flowing through and up to the fuel pump. So we're just going to get some needle nose pliers. Slide those clamps out of the way and replace the inline fuel filter. We'll also throw a rag down there uh, so we're going to get some gas that comes out of the fuel filter itself. Now installing your new fuel filter, you want to check your direction of flow. Um, right there it says flow, so we want to make sure that we keep it the same as the old filter coming from our tank to our fuel pump.
All right, now that we got the oil drained, we can go ahead and tighten the drain plug back up. Now we got the drain plug tightened, we can go ahead and get rid of the hose. All right, so we got the hose out of the way, we'll go ahead and get a rag. We're going to go ahead and stuff it over the top of the drain nipple there. We're going to get it under this piece right here is the oil filter is here. So we want to spin this, oil is going to come in there and then come out onto our rag. You may need an oil filter wrench depending on how tight it is. All right, so we unpackaged our new oil filter. We're gonna go ahead and put a nice thin uh, film on the actual seal. Uh, then we'll go ahead and put it onto the engine. Just hand tight will do. All right, so we got the oil filter on. We can grab a clean funnel, and we're going to go ahead and fill the engine back up with oil. All right, so right on this fill stick, it says, for the correct oil level, do not turn the cap. So don't thread it on. We're just going to dip it in there and pull it straight out. So as you can see, we're right at the full mark. What we're going to do next is start it. That way we can fill the rest of the oil filter up, and then we can go ahead and recheck our level. All right, so we finished running the engine. We're going to go ahead and recheck it. So this one is right at the full mark. Uh, we ended up using the full two quarts in here. All right, so with the oil topped off in the engine to the correct amount, uh, that is it for the engine or servicing the engine on this Hustler Raptor SD. Uh, some other things you may want to look at before you store your mower for the next mowing season uh, would be to lubricate all the deck joints or pivot joints. You also want to inspect your blades to see if you can just sharpen them or whether you need to replace them. The next thing would be to check your hydrostatic drive oil level, make sure that's up to par. Uh, see if you're at that interval where that needs to be serviced and changed out as well. Uh, and lastly, you want to put some kind of fuel stabilizer in the fuel to keep it ready for the next mowing season so it'll start right up and you don't have to deal with the gummed up carburetor. Don't forget to click the link in the description, which will take you to our website for a full write-up. You can also click that subscribe button in the middle. On the right, we have a recommended video just for you. And on the left, you'll find our recent upload. Thanks for watching another episode of the DIYGuy.net.